What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball to Ball series. Today's actually a special episode because our guest today literally just came home, ladies and gentlemen. My dog just came home. He hasn't even been home for, I think, two weeks now. Uh, so this is a beautiful situation to have him on. Um, he's here today, obviously, to share his story about hair loss, and we'll dive deeper into conversations about manhood, mental mental health, and all things that we normally talk about, man. So introducing my newest guest today, uh, the little brother of one of my good friends from business school, Kachi. We got his little brother, Easy, aka Matthew, with me today. Matthew, talk to the people. Give him an intro, family. My name is Matthew, aka Easy. i um, got my own podcast, The Easy Corner. Um, my, my intro is just um, quite simple. Um, you know, um, been through a lot of experience. I knew for a long time now that I wanted to eventually come home, like you would say. So um, I, I was planning to do it at um, the age of 30 when I, um, in October, but obviously we're going to um, dig deep into it on, on why I decided to kind of do it earlier. But, you know, um, it, um, it, 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 this baldness that I've, I, that I've experienced in coming home, it gives me a sense of relief. It gives me a sense of um, a sense of pride, and you know what I'm talking about. So, like, it's just a new outlook, and a, and I'm still the same guy, but it's still like you, you could tell the difference in, in in confidence and difference in bravado. Like, it's just more like when you go bald, it's like you accomplish something. But I know in my life, it's still more to accomplish. But it's something that um, I, I, I take seriously, and I was just like, okay, we can do this. <laughs> talk that talk, talk that talk, my G man. Well, you know, from come home and everybody involved, my brother, welcome home, my dog. Welcome to the home team. We love that. Sure, we love man. that. I, I appreciate it. So, family, before we dive into that, man, we gotta uh, talk about one thing that come home holds dear, and it's the idea and concept of home, right? People hear the word home, and that means a lot of different things to different people. It may bring up family. It may bring up a specific place. It may bring up vac vacations, that kind of thing. So when you hear the word home, um, what does that bring up from you? I know you're from Houston, but also Nigerian. So talk to us. When you hear the word home, what do you think about family? I'll say this, um, family, obviously that goes number one. I think about a safe haven on where you can be comfortable and, and really just kind of just be yourself because um, at the end of the day, like I said, I am from Houston, but um, there there's a plethora of places that I could kind of consider home because it, to me, a, a home is not really based on the house or the living space that you live in. I think it's more to deal with the people in it in your surrounding environment. Like you can call work home because a lot of people be like, they call work home. Um, I'm a basketball coach. I, I, I coach basketball and I cover a lot of um, stuff, um, sports. I consider the court home. So it just to me, it's just about home. It's just about the comfortability, comfortability and also like your surroundings on who is in that environment around you. I love it, man, because you talk about how home is the comfortability. And that's why we like to call it coming home, right? Because before you before you shave your head and you're dealing with the hairline issue, the ball you're not really feeling comfortable, right? You you trying to hide, you don't want people to see it, you wearing hats or whatever. But once you come home and embrace it, like you said, now you can feel comfortable in it. Now it's like a monkey's off your back. You're good to go and you're authentic with it. So you can, that's kind of the play on words that why we call it come home, man, for sure. Yes, sir. So bro, man, I, I know you're from H-Town and I know you're into basketball. So we got to get into sports a little bit right quick before we dive into it, you know what I'm of saying? Of course, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Let's chop hoops. Let's chop hoops for a second. Um, I'm born and raised in Raleigh. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got John Wall on the team. John Wall is not playing right now for a few different reasons. Um, also, y'all had James Harden, who did a, who, I mean, was amazing for that franchise for years and years and years. Now he's left and made his way to down to Philly. So talk to me about the current state of uh, the Houston Rockets basketball and um, what's your thought on, on the future? I stopped actually being a Rockets fan in 2007. A lot of people like, like at the end of the day, um, I, I take sports really, really, really serious. So like as much as I'm a fan, I'm a, I'm a historian of the game and I'm a realist. The Houston Rockets, obviously we, they were one of the top teams in the league for a very, very long period of time. But now obviously they're going through in a rebuilding stage with Jalen Green, Jalen Porter, um, I mean, Kevin Porter. And obviously I think they got the, is it the number three pick in the NBA draft? So um, Houston is just here. Um, it, 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 to me, Houston is a great city, a great city to be in. And But also, but for sports, I think it's just something always that they always just come up there a little short, especially with the Rockets. I just think that just time in and time out, like I said, 
They were in the Western Conference Finals in 2015. They were in the Western Conference Finals that year with Golden State when they were up 3-2 and everybody was saying, oh, if Chris Paul plays 6-7, and seven, the Rockets are world champs. The world champs because they just really think they're beating LeBron James in Cleveland. But Houston, um, the, the, the Rockets State is just that they're just young and rebuilding. So, like, we, we just got to just kind of just see where it goes. So, like, because I said, I just stopped being a Houston fan in 07 when they lost to the Utah Jazz in game seven. That was the same night that De La Hoya fought Mayweather. So, like, yeah, it was, it was the same exact night, both Saturday night, Saturday games. So, like, I just, I have not forgiven T Mac and Yao for that. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, man. Strong history of hoops there, man. You talk about, T Mac and Yao, you talk about before that, um, Hakeem Olajuwon, Kenny Smith, um, Clyde Drexler, I feel like was there for a second. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, sir. No, no doubt. Then you then you obviously get to the James Harden era, and now you're getting you're in the rebuild. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where Houston takes it going forward. But bro, man, again, obviously, you know why we're here, man. My guy has been home for not not long, team. Not long at all, but he's here with us now. Um, so let's let's jump into the story, man. Um, before we actually get to, to the story about how and why you came home, let's take it back, my G. Let's take it back to like middle school, high school. And what kind of hair did you have then? And what did it mean to you, bro? And take me through the story from there, how you ended up seeing like, wait, something, something ain't right no more. <laughs> well, actually, obviously, um, like you said, we're both Nigerian. So, like, the experiences, like, from elementary to middle school, like, elementary, it was cool for the ball fade. So, it's just more like you didn't know what you're doing. But then, all of a sudden, when you start getting hitting those middle school years, like, you know, you, you're looking around, like, oh, stuff got to kind of be on point. Now, that's called, like, like almost like the dressing up era. Like, oh, like, you don't got the forces. You ain't got the Levi G's. You ain't got the polo. Where you at? Like, yo, here, like, you make, like, that's the year that I figured out, like, hey, boys needs to go to the um beauty supply and grab three brushes because you always got to get the brush <laughs> so 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 that's the year that we figured out that, that that we had to go get the brush so like i always kept a clean fade the only thing is i was always known for my big head so it's just more like it's just more like yeah i just made sure that i because i was walking around with naps at one point but but when middle school happened like you know it's different when your parents tell you than your peers tell you. So when your peers come with the jokes and you're not on point, it kind of humbles you. Like your parents say, oh, brush your hair. Like, what you know about that? But when you get to school and you see, you know, people full of waves, full of, full, full, full of hair grease, extra hair grease, and, then you, and you just look at your stuff and you be like, ah, man. So, so, so that's what it is. High school, it's the same thing. I've always just kind of just stayed with a fade. But I would kind of just say when I loved probably like 20, 24, 25, 26. When, because I used to get this part in my head. So I used to get a part of my head at the barbershop. But one day, these sides were just growing back. Mm. And I was just like, bro, what's going on? Like, I'm looking. I'm just like, oh, it's receding for real. And then I throw my hair. But the thing about it is, all of a sudden, it's the ball spot in the back. When that ball spot in the back hit and you try to grow your hair, like, I actually tried to grow my hair earlier this year. I tried to grow my hair earlier this year. And I have a PE class. So I, I, I work with two, two, two women, two PE teacher women. They basically told me, we're not letting you into the gym until you get here. <laughs> yo <laughs> what i was trying to do really was grow my hair and then cut it when i was 30 that was the original plan mm, okay. but then but i was looking like it was just looking bad i was just like bro just get a haircut we're gonna go balls to like 30 but like but that was the original plan but they just literally they sat there and looked at me say you're not walking into this gym without a haircut Shout out to those queens putting their foot down, man. Shout out to those queens putting their foot down, bro. So you, you know what's what I, what's funny, bro? Because I get this when I chop it up with a lot of homies too. They'll be like, yo, at first it was just this, man. And I thought I could save it. Next thing I know, next thing I know, the ball spot happened right here. You mentioned it. It's kind of like, yo, when you're losing your hair, it's one of the things like when it rains, 
it pours almost like all of a sudden flip the switch and everything just started to disappear, man. Cause like for me, my hairline actually was always pretty solid, but I started thinning right here, but it wasn't, um, it felt like it was at first I noticed it, but it wasn't nothing crazy out of nowhere. The transition like sped up, bro. And within like a year or a year and a half, it just got thinner and thinner and thinner until it was just like, yo, just embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, with the thinning, it was really my former girl. She hit me with, she, um, she, I rubbed it, but when she took a picture of it, I'm down on my knees, almost lost it. I was, I was like, it, you, like the worst thing you could do is see it. Like that's the bit, like, like see it because it's just funny because it reminded me of when me, me, Kachi, me and Kachi were avid wrestling friends when we were younger. So Kachi would always get out the move and then I always almost land and have a knot on my head. I will, ne the thing about it is, I won't stop, start crying until I see it in the mirror. Because, and he always say, Matthew, don't look at it, don't look at it, don't look at it. And so I'll be like, all right, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Until I see the knot in the mirror, I start busting out crying. <laughs> so like, I think the best thing is to know that like, okay, I'm glad like I really couldn't see it until somebody took a picture, but now I know. Yeah. That's a fact, man, because mm -hmm. there was definitely plenty of times that, again, because I mean, for me, what, my hairline was fine. So I look in the mirror, I'm good money, right? I, you can't tell me nothing. I was solid, but it wasn't until somebody called it out that I started checking myself. And now that I can see it, and then that, that keeps me on my toes when I'm walking around. I'm like, I'm 5'11", you know what I'm saying? So I'm not the tallest guy in the world. I'm not short, but I'm not the tallest guy. So like um, most, most, most women obviously are shorter than me, so I'm good. But don't let, don't let them catch me sitting down at a table when they walk by me and they, it's just exposed, right? So it was a lot of like pressure or stress for me trying to like avoid, you know, not letting people see it, bro. You know, it worked for me because I work out. So you're not just getting it from coworkers. Those six, seven, eight graders, oh, they call it out. Hey, Mr. Easy. Grow my brother. <laughs> like, so like, you know, like, like, like you hearing it from the, you hearing it from the kids. That's the, the what's the what's the funniest joke you got from one of the kids, bro? Man, man it's a lie because it's just more like it's funny because it's ironic that I cut it as soon as school was out because I know if I would have walked in here with a bald head, that's the best decision I probably could have made was walking, walking into, walking in. But what's the funniest one? They're like, Mr. Easy. What's with that? <laughs> like, I, can't, I can't hear you, bro. You, 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 uh, uh, my fault. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? They're like, Mr. Easy, you can't get no females with that. Like, What's this? Like, 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 it, it's just a plethora. And the thing is, is, it doesn't make any better. Like I said, my head is big. So it's noticeable. So, yeah. Oh, man. I forgot how brutal kids can be, man. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, let them, they, they let them go. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, dog. Okay, so you get to the point. Um, you're peeping it, man. You're peeping it. It's here. Then it's here. During that time, bro, um, one, what are you doing? Are you trying to stop it in any way? Are you, did you think about using Rogaine? Did you think about, what What were you thinking about? Rogaine, hymns, keeps, talk to me, bro. So I thought about it, but then I think my best solution was just like, easy, just get a ball fade. But with the ball fade, it's more like the hairline still messed up. But like, I just felt like that was the solution. Like, hey, we can ball fade this up. But obviously, you still got this. Like, this is all the way on top was already gone. So I was just like, you might good. Keep the keep the front, keep 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 it dark on the front, and 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 and, and just cut the cut the back ball. So that's why a lot of people, when I was bald, they always say, like, as you can see right now, like. I used to get a haircut at ball fades and my head would just be exactly like this. So there's like, oh, we already thought you were bald. There's a lot of people already thought that I was bald anyway. <laughs> so, so you did a, a, you know, a lot of people call it the Kobe cut or the Kobe transition because Kobe oh, yeah. did a really amazing job of like gradually making his way home, right? He ain't run home, he walked home, right? It was gradual. 
But he was bald his rookie year, though. So, like, we've seen oh, him Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was straight bald his rookie year. So, like. That is true. Yeah, I forgot that Cole came into the league bald. And then, so there's so many levels of Cole. We came in bald, went to the fro, back to the cut. Wow. Okay, yeah, yeah. Le- levels for the dog. Um, Art rest in peace to the goat, man. That's my guy, man. Being his, that's, that's my, my guy, too. That's, that's my guy, too. So, you. The ball fade was holding you over for a while, and nobody was really by that time. Nobody was giving you jokes. Yeah, you it was, it was a good, it was a solid look for you, or you were getting jokes. Oh, 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 jokes, jokes because the hairline, the hairline, like like this is missing because it was just it, it wasn't even jokes. They're just like, bro, just go ball, bro, just go ball. Like I literally remember going to an AAU tournament a month ago. One of these girls that I used to coach, she she said. Bro, just go ball. Like from afar, you look ball. Like from like far, you look ball. So when I asked, she was one of the first people I called when I got ball, and she was like, "Yeah, but she said, but but she said, but she said, I'm just shocked that you did it. But she said, it looks good though. So a lot of people were just like, you might as well just gotta just go ball. So like, yeah, it's it's it, a it, 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 it was a great decision. So like, it was just to be out, but the ball fade was still giving me jokes because they're just like. You're cutting it so low, you look bald, and your and, and, and your hairline is gone. So you might like so so they 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 were just like stop fighting the fight. They, like your boy Kachi said, Kachi's like, come on, you know, yo Kachi, come on home, bro, come on home, bro. It's it, it, come on home, bro. Like he's been waiting for this moment longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, did Kachi know you were doing it? And hey, that's why he came to the barbershop at the time. Like, how did that pan out? Hey, yo, yo. Nearly, man. He's my guy, but he was just like, and I, he, 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 oh, you going ball today? I want to be there for you in your time of need. I said, bro, if you get to this barbershop and start doing the stupid, and you know him in Kachi fashion, come on home, bro. And you're all the barbers. I, I'm sitting here looking like, bro, you better not walk up here. And all of a sudden, as soon as the barber kind of turned the chair, he's right there with the camera. I'm like, this dude here, bro. He was like, I couldn't miss this moment. I couldn't miss uh, this moment. It, it was time. It was time. That's funny, man. And it's also funny because Kachi got dreads. Like, you yeah, got a brother who has whole dreads and you lost your hair. So talk to me about that. Um, um, did you got you got any other sip brothers who um what's that look like? I got a, I got a little brother, he still got a fade, but he just turned um he just turned 18, he just graduated. Well, he didn't just turn 18, he turned 18 and couple of days but he just graduated high school so like his hair is fine i got a sister who actually kind of got like a fade a little bit but with the hair on top and stuff like that so with kachi and the dreads man i just don't know but like you can kind of see kachi's edge of kind of falling and falling now he don't he don't want to admit it but i think he's spray on king i really think he's spray on king he don't want to admit it though like he don't want to give me the catcher but like you can see it, it, it you can see it, buddy, but hey, man, hey, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> That's common. <laughs> so, bro, so you were rocking the ball fade, and we got into it before we turned the camera on. Um, tell, me about, tell me about the story that actually got you home to this day. I mean, let's talk about that, Brody. That got me home until this day. Um, um, it's, um, it's kind of, like I said, it's, it's one it, tragedy struck. Um, like I said, my 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 plan was to cut my hair literally in October, at at the a uh, uh, before my thirtieth birthday because I was doing this kind of this party on thirty for thirty for my thirtieth birthday in um Cancun, Mexico. But um, I was um May twentieth um of like this year, like literally three weeks ago. Um, one of my best friends, Emmanuel Ledetepe, um, coach um for Houston Fury, also the teacher of the year at Billy Baines Middle School. Here in um here in um, Missouri City, Texas, um, we drove to Dallas on on Friday, a four hour drive for one of a, a big tournament, and then all of a sudden he had a game at uh ten. You know, uh, uh, he had a game at uh yeah he had a game at ten a.m. Saturday. We actually wake up in the morning of uh, on Saturday morning of May twenty first at five forty five a.m. to game plan for the ten a.m. game. He go, I said, he's like, because he like, that's my boy. He's like, easy, E. He's like, what's the game plan? And, you know, I'm just sleepy. Like, hey, man, it's 545 in the morning. We will talk about this when I get up. But I had to wake up for an 8 a.m. game to film. So I get done filming the 8 a.m. game. I see him at 10. I see him like around 930. But I'm going back to the hotel room to get footage off my, um, get footage off my camera. 
um, I, I um, when I'm heading back to the gym for the next game, I got to film. I um, get a plethora of text messages and phone calls. Hey, man, um, your boy Emmanuel has passed out. In my mind, I'm just like, I know he's a high energy coach. So my, the first thing in my mind was like, he took the game too seriously, or they lost, and he and he and he's being dramatic. And I get more phone calls. Hey, man, um, your boy just had a seizure. So one of me, one of my closest friends is with me. He takes me to the um, back to the um, to, to the basketball courts on, on where he's at. As I um, go to the basketball courts, I see my man laying there motionless. Um, they they get him off the stretcher. I actually jump in the paramedic. I jump in the paramedic truck um, because they because they finally had got a pulse. That was the thing they had got a pulse before he like they stretched him out. So all of a sudden, um, I'm waiting twenty and thirty minutes. Um, they take us into the um, waiting room first. And then I was waiting. And I was like, man, you know, I'm praying. I'm like, hey, my man is going to survive this. We're going to be all right. And then all of a sudden, they take us into a, to, to a family room. Um, at, um, when, we, when, we took, when he took me into the family room, there me, there me and my, my, one of my mentors, Mr. Ho Mr. Um, Anthony Holmes, um, with the chaplain. And then the, the chaplain, he just, just telling us, yeah, we're praying for him. Anthony's going to be all right. Doctor walks in. They said they tried everything in their power to make sure his they save his life, but unfortunately he has passed away. So like he was one of my like I said he's he, he's a great dude, great one of the, actually one of the best humans I know, if not the best human I know other than my family. Like he's one of the best humans I know, a God that I'm very very fond of, and a God that has like been there for me through through everything that I needed that that I went through in um 2021. So um, he he unfortunately didn't make it. Um, me and me and my um, mentor, Mr. Holmes, actually had to call his his brother and his mom and, and his well, We really called his brother, let him know he didn't make it because the year prior he just buried his dad in Nigeria. A year prior, he just he literally just kind of just buried his dad and um, he just buried his dad in Nigeria. So like now, like he he. Together in his car, so. My mentor and myself, we drove his car back from Dallas to Houston on that Sunday. And um, we had the funeral, not Saturday, but the Saturday before that. Um, it was a Houston Fury girls team. So I've been talking to them a lot, you know, because I've been like, like he's my, I'm his right hand guy. Like I, I was never his assistant coach, but like I would always show up to his practices, practice with his team just to get some cardio in and stuff like that. So and he always, we always enjoyed each other's company and basketball intellect. So, but that everything is not guaranteed. Life is not even guaranteed. So I said it to myself, I was just like, why, why take it to 30 when I know I'm not even guaranteed 30? I'm at, I'm not guaranteed 30. I said easy, touch. And he, the one thing that he has taught you is, you know, never give up, but also be comfortable in your own skin. And, and at that moment, I decided, hey, man, I'm covering his hair. Because, like, like, at the end of the day, who am I to plan a 30th birthday party when I saw my best friend go down and he didn't make it to the age of 35? So, um, I, you know, since then, you know, I'm, you know, um, I try to wake up every day and just try to follow his principles and his guidance and stuff like that so at the end of the day like yeah I'm, I'm still sad and still hurt over it but I know that my best thing that how I can live out his name is represent him by being comfortable in my own skin and going after my dreams and don't stop the grind because before this AAU season me and him always had a motto together which was hashtag finish the job because we left unfinished business in Dallas last year. And we're like, when we turn around for next year, this is not going to happen again. So, 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 so our, our motto literally this year was finish the job. So I've actually been taking that motto real seriously. I run seven miles a day and I know I put running for two because it's kind of ironic. We were actually supposed to start working out together when school ended. Mm -hmm. So like he literally passed, Monday, that Monday, I went back to work. And the only reason why I went back to work because it was the last week of school. So we were going to work out, the, start working out the following Monday. So if you guys see on my Instagram, on my stories, when I'm putting running for two, I'm running for him. And I put hashtag at the bottom, finish the job. So yeah, but, like, but he's the reason why 
I kind of I sped up the process to go bald just to represent like, hey man, I'm comfortable and I'm, I'm my own skin and life is not guaranteed. Wow. Wow, 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 man. Um definitely a heavy story and probably one of the one of the heaviest I've heard um on this podcast. Um, specifically around going bald, man. So obviously I want to thank you for being vulnerable enough to share that with us. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know how I would deal with that. Like, you know, if I lost my best friend, um, wow, in that, kind of, in that kind of way, like so, so like abruptly, um, I, I don't know how, how I would deal with it, man. So um, obviously praying for you, praying for him, his family, um, and just wow, but I'm glad that you've seen to be able to find um, ways to cope and ways to move forward and continue to pay tribute to his legacy, which is always a beautiful thing. And I'm glad that, um, we're not glad how that happened, but I'm glad that we've been able to cross paths um, to allow you to share that story. Cause that's powerful, man, to people with listening, you know, um, life isn't guaranteed. You know, some of the healthiest people, we talked about this earlier, there were no signs up to this point, right? No signs of his anemia or nothing, right? No signs. Wow. Wow, 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 man. So that's just another, um, just a, a, a signal and an indicator to, you know, like Easy said, uh, live life every day. You know what I'm saying? Don't wait for anything. Not a 30th birthday, not a 31st birthday, none of that. Again, that, none of that is promised. Um, but also always finish the job and also, you know, be comfortable in your own skin because you don't have too many days to live to be, you know, trying to be somebody else or trying to put on a front because that takes work in itself and that's stressful in itself. But when you're just being yourself, um, you can be a lot more comfortable, man. So, um, wow, wow, very powerful story, man. I, I want to I dive a little bit deeper into this. Um, so, bro, like how... Obviously, I'm sure like, you know, that day and a couple of days after you were probably like a shell of yourself, right? I'm assuming like, trying to figure things out. Um, um, you seem a, a bit more put together now, but I imagine it's, you know, in America, it's kind of like life. It's just like you don't you have no choice, but to somehow keep it moving regardless of what you're going through. How have you been able to kind of just cope with it, bro? So you say like how you just said America life goes through. I told my mom, I told, I told my mom and my sister the weirdest thing about that day that he passed at 12, like around 12 afternoon. How I did this. I actually came back to the gym to film an hour after he passed. Wow, wow, wow. I like it like because that was my mindset is finishing the job. And the other thing, like I was telling people, they're like, how did you do it? Because I said it would be different. If I was in Houston, I could probably drive and just chill and just kind of just be in my own in, in my own space. But I'm in a different city alone in my hotel room where the that's one of the last candid conversations we had was in that hotel room. And so it was just more like I back to the gym when he passed an hour later and turned on my camera because I just felt like. I just thought about it and it was just like finish the job because the one thing about death and time, it doesn't wait for nobody. So like, like I said, he died at 12. So initially, a full day. A full day after that. Like it just that's that's what's scary about it. Like I saw the man at 5 45 in the morning. I saw him standing up literally at 10 a.m. He passes around like around 12. And I go back to the gym around one or two. So it's just more like, is this really death? And this is really life. Like time really passes like that. Like my boy just died two hours ago, but I'm right now filming. So it was just like one of those out of body experiences mm -hmm. for me. It's like, how the hell, what, how was I able to still do it and function? And then people at work was like, how are you here after experiencing that? And you came to work every day, the whole week. And and had to address his team on that Tuesday. Went to the candlelight vigil and, and, and addressed the Seattle community about it. So like that week, I almost gave like four speeches about him, even including the funeral. So you know, it's just more like I know him, 
and I know his mentality. Like as much as I grieve, I can grieve. I told myself one thing because my family is full of hard workers. Like my sister works hard. My mom works very hard. And if you know my brother, you know that he works very, very hard. I've always been intelligent, but my work ethic, not until probably last year, wasn't the best work ethic and it wasn't really as hard as I was going. And I know that I'm a sensitive and emotional young man. The only thing I told myself during this process, it's okay to grieve, but I did tell myself because I was good for doing this in the past. No crutch to accomplish what you want to do because he wouldn't want that for you. And he you don't want you to, he wouldn't want you to um to to, to, to be that way. So at the end of the day, give yourself a, a little break, but don't overextend it. Talking about myself, I can't do this because he's not here. <laughs> so that's so the only way that I feel that I can justify his name and and, and justify his name and, and and carry his legacy is being the best person I can be also being the best at my craft because that's what he would want so like for me i have a teacher exam coming up i'm zero and two in this journalism seven through 12th grade teacher exam but me and him talked about this teacher exam like hey man easy you need to take this because we know your impact on kids i'm not talking about the subject so like i even told my mom and i told Koch, i said i don't want to make any excuses I don't want to use my man's death as a crutch and, and a hindrance on why I can't get what I need to done. So at the end of the day, like the only way I can represent him well, if I accomplish and do what I need to do. Wow, wow, man, wow. I love it, man, using it as motivation. Um, Cause like you said, it seems like that's what he would want for sure. Wow, um, man, well, so bro, Again, you know, um, tough, tough way um, to join a home team. But um, again, welcome home. Um, we're, we're definitely glad to have you, my brother. Um, you mentioned some going through some things in 2020, 2020, 2021, right? Which was obviously a very tumultuous time for many of us due to the pandemic, due to social upheaval, just so many things going on in this country. And uh, I mean, I think even myself, I had so much time to reflect during that time. I spent, so, I spent more time alone during the pandemic than I've ever in my entire life, right? And that um, was amazing for me. At the time, I didn't know it was amazing for me. I, my roommates were leaving. I was like, yo, don't leave, yo. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I never live by myself, I'm gonna hate this. Um, but I ended up being by myself and just spending, an, a, a, a tremendous amount of time reflecting, learning about myself. Um, and I think I came out on the other side of the pandemic, a stronger version of self, understanding self a lot more. Um, talk to us a little bit about some of the things that you went through during that time. Can you hear me, bro? 20, okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. In 2021, it was just more like, it was a year of um, growth but also growth needed in my personal life. I can't, I, I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be the first one to say it in my personal life. Um, I had a best friend, which turned into my girlfriend of almost like my best friend of 15 years and my girlfriend of three. We ended up just going our separate ways. I know that took a toll on me because that's a person that I can find in every day. And it, it's a person I still have love for, great character, great person. But at the end of the day, like, you know that you kind of got to do what's best for yourself. So at that time, I well, I, I know at that moment, she felt like she had to do what's best for herself. So like, but it took a toll on me because, you know, you start questioning yourself like, hey, man, were you good enough to do this? Were you good enough to be that guy that she needed? So, so you know, that that was a question that I really, 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 really had to just look in the mirror. Like I had to answer, answer to myself. And then also, um, I lost one of my AAU teams. Like I was coaching, I put it together, but you know, you know, I felt that the thing that I was trying to do, we weren't really on the same page. And eventually I'm the one that got the boot, but it's okay because those kids know what I did. And those kids still call me to this day, like, coach, you're still my coach. And I always told them, I might not be coaching you guys like physically, but I'm still your coach. And the thing is, now I'm just y'all fans. I'm just a fan of y'all. I get to watch you guys play rather than just yell at y'all. 
So at the same time, I know those two things because I'm really big on family. So like those, that team was like my family, but at the end of the day, we we're still a close knit group. So like, I just know that nothing was going to stop me from being away from them. It's just that I wasn't able to be a part of their development. Like I like to be so, but, but so, so I know those were the two things I think, that was the first go round that I took the teacher exam and failed the, failed the first time and stuff like that. And then um, I had serious health issues. Like I have high blood pressure. I was a pre-diabetic. I've had, I had high cholesterol. So it wasn't until literally August of 2021 when I started um, taking workouts seriously, going to my trainer, shout out my guy, Sean Brooks, um, going to my trainer at 4.30 in the morning and I think he just kind of just taught me the mental grind and the mental preparation. I don't really actually go to him no more, but I run, but, but I'm disciplined enough to run seven miles every day and, you know, eat better. And then with that, like I was taking four pills last year, literally two high blood pressure pills, a cholesterol pill and a pre-diabetic pill. Mm-hmm. Now I'm down to two. Now, now I'm down to two pills. So like, I, myself, I hope before 30, there's no pills. And that'll be the first time in almost 13 years, I was taking medicine because I've been having high blood pressure since high, um, high school. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm about to turn 30. So, like, I know that that's one of the goals that I'm aiming at, but I don't really think of it as a goal. I think of it as a task because I feel like I can accomplish it. I, I accomplish it. I think goals are more like something that you set and go after. I think the, uh, me getting off these pills is a task because I know it's possible because I just got off of two. So like, it's like, oh, my goal is like, it's, I, I'm not going to celebrate getting off medicine. <laughs> I'm just not like, 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 like no, that, that, that's not something that I, oh, 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 on top of my bucket list, I want to get off medicine. No, I'm not celebrating it. Like if I do what I need to do and continue the route that I'm going, it's possible for the first time in almost 12, 13 years that I won't be taking no medicine. And like, obviously, um, and then, so we just fast forward to 2022, I began, be, began doing my my video videography business easy corner films. it's part of the easy corner brand this is my easy corner podcast we can get get into that later but like easy corner films where i get to shoot shoot um high school athletes playing their respective sports and also kind of just doing interviews with them but you know is it, it, it it's been a big turnaround from 2021 2022 but i know those two things those two things that that I that I three things that counted the teacher exam and the and the and, and also the medicine part. So those four things, I felt like I had to go through that to be where I am at today. So if I'm not if I if I if I, if I don't go through those problems, and you know, and I can't lie, I can't I didn't do this alone. So like guys mm-hmm. like Kachi was in my ear talking about how great how, how good I was, and you know, I people don't know about I, I don't I went through a lot, but my brother Kachi. Like he's one of the best. I saw him literally say at the at the height of his career at age 30 that I don't want to be an engineer no more. And he wanted to, he wanted to be a full-time student. And now he's about to cash in on, on, on what he deserves. So it's just more like I just think some of my problems were 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 minor. And I just think that like as long as that I have the foundation and still have a good solid heart because I don't think my, my heart and, and the way I am was just never a problem. But I know that I talked to a plethora of people and they're saying, easy, I don't think you had a problem working hard. I just think that business wise, you were just doing a lot of free stuff. Like you can't tell me that you're going around interviewing all the top high school players, putting gas on your car, driving from almost like, so I live in the suburbs of Missouri city. And then there's a place called Katie. That's almost like 45 minutes away. And like you go into these basketball games every night, you're not lazy. It's just more like, you just got to make better, better kind of business decisions. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen you like during the pandemic, you almost interviewed the whole state of Texas, top Texas basketball players during the pandemic. Like you had top guys, like you, you, you really have top college players. In, in the country on your show. So to me, that wasn't lazy. You just weren't making no money, but that shows me that you were doing what your purpose was and your passion was, and you did it for no money. So, and, 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 and you were just as happy as a rich guy that made a million dollars. So um, that, that was it. But I just think like, 
the whole business mindset of me changed and just the whole like me being in a sense, because I think my discipline was trash. So yeah. it, was, it, 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 it was real trash, but that's what it really comes down to. So it's more like, like today, I just ran the seven miles today. I ran, set, so I've ran, I ran seven miles for three straight days now. And I just, I just think my bot, my mind, it, yep. it like running, running is really a mental thing. People don't really realize, like really is really a mental thing. People think it's a physical thing, but no, it's really a mental thing. Like, mm. and the thing is, I think when I run it's by myself and it's taught me a lot of like, what are you, what are you willing to endure? And what are you willing to, 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 to go through? Like, it's just more like my mind doesn't stop. So my body is not stopping. And I know my body sometimes be tired, but like my mind is just like, keep going. And especially now that my boy is gone, it's really been telling me, Hey man, we got to keep going. Look, besides the exam, at the end of the day, like like I said, I'm running for two now. I'm not running for myself. I'm running for two. So at the same time, um, like I just said, like those problems, I I would say I wouldn't wish that upon nobody, but I'm kind of in hindsight 2020. I'm I'm glad it happened because I'm not in this position right now. I'm probably still trying to keep my hair, probably trying to grow it out again <laughs> instead of being bald. But like now, just more like like I just said, like my body feels good. I said, I think, it, you know, everything is just in due time. So, like, I just think this yeah. happened at the right time. Me and you crossing paths happened at the right time. And you know what I'm talking about? So, like, I'm real, 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 real confident in myself when I can say, like, in 20, 2020, in 2021, I really wasn't. Wow. Wow, 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 man. Just, like, so many people went through so much change in life during the pandemic and you 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 know you you went through all the change that we all went through on top of these other additional things that were going on in your life but you were able to kind of get through that and use those all as an opportunity for growth and development which continues to be a powerful thing and I can even hear it in your voice that you tell these stories that you've changed so much you've evolved so much and you're just ready for the future what the future holds and I, um of course you know me and Kat used to work out together a bit in school and I was, I'm, I'm really big into fitness too and I know and I can tell you so many times how fitness and the dedication to it has made me feel like I'm unstoppable in so many ways right when you're when you're on that fifth mile and your body feels like it can't go anymore but it's mind over matter and you're like no you gotta go further right that that right there translates itself into the grind into the daily grind where you're like damn I'm too tired to go up pick, fill up the car go interview one more person now it's, it's almost it's Friday night I don't want to do it but that same mentality that pushed you through that fifth mile is that same mentality that will get you over that finish line in life? So I love, love, love to see how you're using that connection, man. I just actually posted uh, something on my story. I went to one of my good friends' house, Montia Collier, um, one of my one of, one of one of my great friends, great person to be around. I went to her house on Sunday, and there's a quote that has stuck with me all week. Day, she looked at me and said, "Easy." No more. And I'm like, she said, "You're not what now? Not the underdog anymore." Oh, I was just like, "Hey, like that is real as it can get." Like, you know, like she's like, "We they see what you're doing. Like, you do easy corner films. We know that you're trying to teach, and you're on your exercise game. Like, we you're not the underdog no more. Like, they're taking oh, what you're doing." Oh, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Let us see when, because it's, it's dope internally um, when you know what you know is going right, but it's even doper sometimes, not all the time, because sometimes internal satisfaction is stronger, but it's always dope when like the work you're putting on internally or behind closed doors, the world starts to see, because sometimes that validation is needed, man. So hell yeah, bro. Love to hear that. Love to hear that. Um, dog, powerful story, man. Powerful story. Um, we're about to get into our back half, but before we do, you know what I'm saying? I know you're new to the home team and all, but I gotta, I gotta ask you this question, man. So everybody that I bring up here, I keep it real. Um, everybody knows me, man. Kachi can tell you this too. I talk that talk when it comes, um, to ball guys. I'm like, you know what? 
I remember in the 90s, everybody was saying light-skinned guys was on top. It was light-skinned guys, this and that. All the shorties went to light-skinned dudes. Now, you know what I'm saying? I got this feeling that, like, ball guys, we 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 kind of coming up. Because I remember when I shaved my head, I'm like, yo, women not going to want no, nothing to do with me no more. False. 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 <laughs> That's big, big facts. Big facts. Big facts. Big facts. So, Brody, talk to me, man, because I feel like sometimes I I go off on my high horse and just being like, yo, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm seeing a lot of my homies going ball. I'm, I'm meeting homies that have not even losing their hair. They just they just like the ball. Look, they went ball and I can I can screenshot a ton of DMs from women telling him my math and my DMs like, Kenny, I'm so glad you're doing this. I love me a ball, man. Blah, blah, blah. So. I go on, I'm, I'm on social media all the time talking about how ball guys, how we're up right now. You know what I'm saying? We up on the competition, blah, blah, blah. Tell me if you've been starting to, I know you're new to the crib. You just came home. So you're just brand new to the crib. But have you been kind of seeing or peep, peeping that kind of elevation right now for the team? I see it right now, but I know I haven't reached my peak yet because it is more like, I'm actually going to Antigua in two weeks. So you know I'm finna show out. I got a little birthday dinner like next week. So I really haven't really been out, out with my bald head. I've really just been in the gym filming and doing stuff. So, but I've tried on some of these outfits with this head and I'm just like, oh yeah. It, 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 it's about to get real spicy in the, in the, in the, up, in the upcoming, like, then I, basically I'm looking like, they're not gonna wanna see me. They're not gonna wanna see me. They, like, like they're not gonna want to see. Me. I, I already know, like, because I said, and I'm running seven miles every day too. I said, oh, they not. And, 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 and but I think the best thing, and I think you could attest to this for both of us, the best thing that could that can basically really happen to us is that we can still keep our beard, because I think that's the initial. Because that's really the initial reason why some people can really go bald. Because okay, we got our beard. We got our beard. Because it's different if you have to cut the beard too, but the fact that you can still keep our you keep you can still keep your beard that it really plays a big factor in people going ball. Like okay, we good, we got the beard done. That's so we good. Fact, That's a fact. And actually, you're you're absolutely absolutely not the first guy. I'm, I'm sure I've heard this in at least six seven other episodes where do homies is like yo. Bald and beard is the wave, but if I had no beard, I don't know what I would do, bro. I can't lie. You don't know. You don't know. Like I said, that's the best thing because a lot of people, because that's everybody was everybody's excuse for me. Like, easy. You got a beard, bro. You good. You good. You got a beard. You got a beard. Like, if you didn't have the beard, we we, we might have to get, get some type of treatment up there. But you got a beard, bro. So you, so you, so you bought you good to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Well, so you heard it first from my dog Easy right now. He peeps it too. Um, and we we just up right now, man. Like I said, ball guys are up. Um, everybody's really peeping it, man. So um, if you're struggling out there, you're ready to join the home team, man. Pull up, cause because we just getting stronger and stronger day in and day out. That's all I'm gonna say, man, for sure. So Ian, man, I'm taking us into the back half now, man. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple questions to ask you. Um, we're going to start off with this first one, you know, um, I know you're new to the crib again, but, um, uh, first question here is like a lot of ball guys, you know, because we don't really have the opportunity to switch our hair. We can't go from the dress to the low cut to the mohawk. We got one look, a lot of guys will throw on hats, you know, saying hats to kind of switch it up. Um, do you have a favorite or go-to hats or do you not, you're not really a hat guy? Okay. I think that's I think that's part of the reason why I was going bald because I was wearing hats a lot. I'm a hat guy. So um my, my first hat, it is funny, it's ironic that you say that because Kachi took it from me, but now I finally got it back. But my go-to hat is really um the classic dark blue New York Yankee hat. Mm, the classic it. dark the, 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 the classic dark blue New York Yankee hat. I'm really a um a graphic hat guy, so I like the black dad caps with with some with some type of design on it. So like so so I, I I'm a big fan of those hats. So um, but I would say the go to might be the yeah might be the um the, the, the blue Yankee the blue New York Yankees hat. That's a classic. That's a classic for sure for sure. Everybody's had one of them in their lifetime, no doubt, no doubt. 
Next question here, family, man. Um, just looking at me and you today. Obviously, we legends in the making when it comes to this ball thing. You know what I'm saying? We legends in the making. But of course, I'm the type of guy that always, always like to look back to figure out, hey, like, who, whose shoulders are we standing on? Like, who are the legends that did it before us to make it so smooth for us to be this iconic with the ball look? So if I had to ask you, bro, to name the four most iconic ball men that you would put on your Mount Rushmore ball guys, the guys who who did it first, who were like, yo, they made it cool to be bald. Who are those four guys you would say? have Michael Jordan on your list, like, you, you, there's no Mount Rushmore. Like, you have to put Mike. Like, Mike made it stylish to be bald. Like, like if Michael Jordan, not, like, not even if you're not even a sports fan, Michael Jordan should be on every bald man's list, bro. Like, I'm sorry. He made it stylish. He made it. He he he, he transcends it. Like, he made it global. Like, he made it okay to be bald. So, obviously, Mike. Um, I'm a sports fan, so I might go full of athletes, but then you could, but obviously there's some musicians. So like when you look at the goats in their respective sports, Mike is probably the greatest basketball player of all time. He's bald. Jerry White is the greatest football player of all time. He's another bald guy. Blemish on his record. He's a bald guy. So I'm looking at so so and then because this is for four sports. So I'm going four sports guy. He's considered the greatest baseball player of all time, but he's not an all of fame. Barry Bonds. He's another. So like, so you look at those four guys and what they've done in their respective sports in the records that they have, probably all time leading in some, like in some type of category, those four guys. And then I said, if you kind of just want to take it back to boxing, you look at a guy like Mike Tyson, who, 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 who did the ball book. And then all of a sudden, one of the greatest wrestling entertainers of all time is Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> People don't mention Stone Cold enough. And I was the biggest Stone Cold fan of all time, bro. Stone Cold Steve Austin is a legend. And I think, yeah, people, most people, Vince McMahon will probably tell you that Stone Cold is the greatest wrestler of all time. Like, The Rock obviously had a great career and took off even crazier in, like, Hollywood. But you talk about WWF, Stone Cold Steve Austin, I mean... I mean, wow, just wow. I just look at all that era. That era was like a part of the 90s. So like, you know, so a part of the 90s, like, like, like I said, you said Stone Cold, but then all of a sudden in WCW, you had Goldberg who was bald. And then, and, you know, everybody was going to, oh, crazy over Goldberg. Charles Barkley is a bald guy. So, you know what I'm talking about? So you look at these plethora of bald men who has paved the way and made their stamp across the country because these are all global defining men. <laughs> global defining men. So, like, I, it's just hard for me to rush more, but I just know that you probably, Mike has to be on it. I think Mike starts it off. And then, like I just said, everybody else is really deba um, debatable, but we talk about from a cultural and global impact. I think Mike, Mike stands alone. Like, if Mike is not on everybody's list, that means the list is invalid. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. You got to think about it, man. You know, this is, we probably shot almost 70 episodes and I would say 62, 63 of those episodes, Mike is on every single list. You know what I'm saying? Like um, very few episodes that Mike didn't come up. And like you said, for very good reason, a global icon who changed sports, who changed basketball, who changed just, you know, athlete superstardom, um, how you market an athlete, how you brand an athlete. And they might not tell you this, but one of the, one of the reasons it was so easy to market my man was the ball head. And I'm gonna just leave. I'm gonna just leave it right there. I'm gonna leave it right there. Yo, two more questions here, Brody. Two of my favorite questions here on every episode. The first one, man. Obviously, we kind of created this podcast here to, to share, share some of the stories, um, hair loss stories um, from men that are dealing with it. So guys can watch. And if you're still struggling with hair loss, you can hear Easy story and be like, well, damn, you know what I'm saying? Easy did it. I can do it too. So if you know somebody's watching this right now, still, still dealing with hair loss, bro, what would be the best advice you could give them? My best friend, be comfortable in your own skin. Emmanuel Adetipi himself, the late, great Emmanuel Adetipi himself. Be comfortable in your own skin. 
Gotta love it. You gotta love it. Be comfortable in your own skin, man. And, and, and that means a couple of other things, right? So like, I don't like to create, you know, with this brand, um, I don't try to fake the fuck and say like, hey, as soon as you start losing your hair, you need to cut off immediately, right? Like that's not necessarily the move for everybody. Um, and you know, some people may feel just as comfortable with the the bad hairline or the 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 you know the missing the thinning scalp. So it's not to say that you have to come home if you feel if you feel comfortable with what you got by every means. You know what I'm saying? We're not trying to bring you to the crib, uh, but it is for those guys who are like dealing with that. They're dealing with the anxiety. They trying to wear the hats. They doing everything they, to hide it, man. If you're going through that, it ain't worth it, man. You come join the home team, and you know what I'm saying we'll show you how it's done for sure. Last question, bro, and probably my favorite one of every single episode, man. Come home in French, as we spell it, translates to English to me, like a man or as a man. So we like to use this platform to not only talk about hair loss, but to also talk about development and evolution from boy to man and what it means to be a man. And some of those things um, include understanding how to deal with emotions, understanding how to deal with failure, understanding how to deal with change and bounce back. So um, easy, man. When you think about it today, it's 2022, man. We think about today, you're almost 30 years old. You've been through a lot of life. Um, what does it mean to you personally, bro, to be a man? Honor. We got to, I got, start from the top. I can't hear you, bro. I said, to me, it's the highest honor. It means to me, it's the, it's the highest honor. That means that you assume the leadership role in so many ways, just leading your family household, probably leading your religion, leading your, your career is your ability to know that can change as many people's lives, but as a man, you can really affect and change people's lives in a positive way, but you can also change it for the negative way because of depending on who is watching, so I just think at like like manhood is something that should be taken seriously in all in all realms of life. Even like women should be watching how their men are, or even examples of a of a good man, or even a great man on how to be and how to raise sons and how to and, and, and how to raise boys to to get to be men. So that and, and I like that question that you asked because obviously I'm in education and I also coach. So I'm around a plethora of young men trying to lead them to the water and telling them, hey, listen, it, it's cool to have your own business young, but it's also cool. Also, have a have an educational plan as a backup because I always tell my my students, I say, um, be versatile in this life because what if you be versatile, you can get paid for it. Uh, but but all four, and that means that's a lot more money coming your way because that means you can do five jobs in one. That means they got to pay you five times, five times the five times what you're worth. So like so, I just tell them. So I just think as, as manhood means just so much to me, and I think that you just touched on it so well. Like the evolution, um, I always your coach's life is about responding and like so 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 it's just more like as a man just be able to take that leadership because I think it takes men to do a lot of great achieve a lot of great things in this world like men are supposed to be leaders but they're also supposed to be an understanding and some and they also supposed to be somebody that you could can confine in but it's also somebody that you can be a role model role model but even young ladies on um, how you take how you take care of your business, how the way that you move, the way that you're helping the community. So I, I just think man, manhood is like it's a it's an ongoing definition. Yeah. Wow, 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 man. Yeah. And I like how you ended that, bro, because um, manhood isn't just one thing. And to your point, it's evolving. Right. It, it's it's an it's always changing and evolving what it means to be a man. And you talked about some key things, though. You mentioned leadership. You mentioned influence. You mentioned accountability, adaptability, man. All the things that really, when you piece them together, 
build what you would look at as a role model kind of man. But, you know, you know, growing up kind of when we grew up, maybe we didn't see that. Maybe they were showing us, you know, I remember the media. I used to think growing up, oh, to be a man, I need to have eight, eight women. I need to not show no emotion, all these things. And, you know, I grew up, you know, until almost, I mean, I can't lie. It was almost a pandemic that set me down and put every, set everything still that I had to start rethinking about and relearn, unlearning some of these things and being like, yo, wait, what? I've been doing all this the wrong way for so long. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I love, love, love that you can kind of, pick apart what it means to be a man. Uh, Cause it's a beautiful thing, bro. So um, that was amazing, man. Great answer, great answer, bro. Give you off with, because you know, you did a lot during the, during the pandemic. I would say, um, um, life, 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 a chance to kind of just reflect and also just, um, just be, um, you know, including me, that I I I probably needed to, needed the pandemic out of anything to get where I want to be and be. Where I'm That's amazing, man. I hope I'm sure so many people went through the pandemic, and um, you know, obviously, some people didn't make it out of that as well. Um, so the folks that did, obviously, it's our duty um, to come out of it more impactful and um, ready to put more people on our shoulders and ready to cause and create more change and impact, man. So amazing, amazing. Bro, man, this has been a great episode. If somebody's watching right now, they want to tap in with you on social, what's the best way to find you, my boy? Find me on Twitter, the easy corner underscore one on Instagram, the easy I-L-M-Z five. The Easy Corner Films 5. Easy Corner Films 5 on uh, IG. And you said Easy Corner on Twitter? Easy Corner underscore one. The Easy underscore one on Twitter, man. For sure, for sure. We're going to tap in with you, man. No doubt, bro, man. Thank you so much for tapping with tapping in with us on this episode. Another great episode for the people, man. Um, any last words, bro? Yeah, I appreciate it, man. What you're doing, man. It, 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 like I just said, I think that you're one of... When I told you about one of my friends, Montia, um, she basically said, like, you just got to know that you're creating a, an avenue, an avenue, and, 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 and you know, um, hitting points like mental health, manhood, and also, like, insecurities and stuff like that. That means a lot. Like, that means a lot to me. Like, it was no doubt, not only, like, my brother vows for you, but there's no doubt that I was going to do this podcast and I just kind of just want and just allow me to speak and tell my story telling personal stories like I don't think I've really told my whole story in a, in a direct direct like that but I like like it was very very fun but very 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 informative though but so like I can't lie like a lot of the questions that you ask I ain't gonna lie I'm probably gonna take it and steal it from you but I'm gonna give you credit and, 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 and get some of the questions in because I, I can't lie you did a you did a wonderful wonderful job with this platform um like I just said just know that that you got a fan out of me and that I'll be tuning in I'll be tuning in and stuff like that so so like just keep it keep it going yeah, that, that's the only thing I would just say as a podcast host to another podcast host but I think you were kind of already know just staying consistent because I actually I need to get back to doing the Easy Corner podcast because a lot of people in the city been asking Easy when you coming back because but you know it's all good in due time in due time get back soon family bring it back real soon man no doubt no doubt yo man uh, again amazing episode y'all tap in with my boy Easy on all platforms for sure man and as I say at the end of every single episode y'all stay bold y'all stay bold and we'll see y'all soon.